first I have to show you my cherry tree. I was mowing this morning and I looked over and it was just blazing white with blossoms. So for just a few seconds, come take a look at the cherry tree. It's just gorgeous. This tree is full of blossoms all the way up. Normally I keep these trees pruned to about seven feet, but I've let this one get about, I'd say, eight and a half, nine feet. As soon as it's fruited, I will definitely be summer pruning it down to a more manageable height. But what I'll do is net the bottom two thirds of it. So I get the cherries and leave the top third for the birds. Just beautiful. And the bees definitely think so too. Hi everyone, Kim here at Olive City Permaculture. I'm in Northern California, Zone 9B, and I am growing and ever expanding my perennial food forest here. I wanna share with you what I did, how I handled some forgotten plants. Now maybe you've never put down a few plants in a corner of your backyard or your patio or porch and thought, I'll get back to that in a few hours or, or a few days at most. And then the weeks and months go by and you either never think of them again or you come back and notice them one day and they're dead. <laughs> or like me perhaps, you stumble across them mm, a year and a half later and they're still alive. So in today's video, I'm gonna be transplanting some tree collard and some elderberry. Though forgotten, these plants did somehow survive, and so I'm going to give them a chance at thriving this year. These are merit tree collards. They're cuttings that I took off of my original uh, few collard trees that I had. I took these cuttings over two years ago, put them in these little pots here, and basically forgot about them. Once every few weeks, I would splash a little water in them. They were on my back covered patio along with flower pots and some things I was starting that I wanted to keep in the shade. And really they were just in a corner, a forgotten spider webby corner that I really did pretty much forget about. And yet, here they are. I discovered them today and they look <laughs> so healthy. I've moved them just up the steps here uh, from my covered patio where the lavender is currently in bloom and a buzz with bees So I really should put these seven tree collards in the ground and now I know the microclimate they really prefer I mean, they've done so well. They're absolutely neglected that I can't even imagine What they're gonna do if I actually give them regular water So I do want to put them somewhere where they get filtered Sun for part of the day, but a lot of shade too yeah, if you notice that shadow come across the video, it's because the sun went behind the clouds. It's been going in and out this afternoon. It was really overcast all morning. Unlike the spring flowers video I did just a couple of days ago, today was not a sunny day. It's been raining and cold for the last several days. It's still been in the 30s Fahrenheit at night. Yeah, just continuing on with the weird, wacky, long, cold winter. But supposedly that's going to change tomorrow and we're supposed to have sunny weather for the next week so i do want to get these in the ground and i will show you them once they are transplanted because even though i'm not a huge fan of these uh the ducks and the sheep and the chickens all love them now here's something else i need to plant this is a north american black elderberry sambucus canadensis and the other one is a coarser elderberry, Sambucus nigra. Now here is the thing about these. Um, I'm gonna admit to something here. I've had these for a year and several months. In other words, I ordered these last year around January, got them in March, and never planted them. Now clearly they have a lot of roots there. I did keep them wrapped in wet newspaper and watered. 
for the last year and three months, but I never planted them. I couldn't make up my mind where I wanted them, but they have survived. Unfortunately, uh, they each had a partner and those two did not survive. So I'm gonna have to order another Sambucus nigra and another Sambucus canadensis because they need two of the same type to produce fruit. While I'm waiting for the other two to show up, at least these can be in the ground and uh, growing properly where I finally decided to put them. Probably won't get fruit this year, almost definitely not, but hopefully next year. You know, in my spring flowers video I did recently, I showed you my pineapple quince tree and how it had these amazing rose-like blooms on them. And I was curious to see how they would look when they opened. Well, they sure don't disappoint. They are beautiful. Just this amazing delicate pink. And the bees clearly love them. So hopefully we'll get some pineapple quince this year. Just look at all that beauty. Nature is definitely the best artist, isn't she? And this is my new quince tree. It's a Krimskaya quince. Obviously very tiny, but it is trying to blossom. As you can see right there. So I will be taking note and keeping you guys updated on how this does. Planting it here on the western end of my property, about 12 feet away from my fence. Yep, earthworms already discovered in the soil. So I have a very large male mulberry tree behind me and I have put this on the fringe of where it casts its shade because in the wild, elderberries usually grow on the edge of a forest land. They do like full sun, but we get really intense sun here in the summer, so I think they'll appreciate the uh, mid to late afternoon shade from this mulberry tree. So when I separated the two elderberry plants, uh, lo and behold, one of them is much, much larger than the other one. They both have a good root system. This one far better than the other one, as you can see there. But the other one has a nice root system. It just has very, very little growing off of it. So we'll see what happens with it. They are pretty resilient plants, so it will probably be fine, especially since I'm not counting on getting any fruit from them this year, obviously. Now, one thing I'm going to do a little differently than usual when I transplant things uh, is I'm going to actually add something to the soil. I'm going to amend the soil. Yes, just a bit. Normally, I don't do that because most fruit trees and nut trees and actually most cuttings do far better if they get used to whatever soil type you have um, from the get-go. Obviously, you should be picking a good location if they like very good draining soil you better pick that and if they like to be in full sun you'd better pick that etc but when it comes to actually amending the soil I usually do not amend because that recommended route and what I've seen with my own personal experience is that trees and plants generally do better if they get accustomed to whatever kind of soil you have however there are exceptions and for me the exceptions have been when a plant wants acidic soil now citrus trees definitely want this and so I do give them acidic soil one way or another. And there are several ways you can do that. You can buy soil that is intended for citrus or hydrangeas and such, um, blueberries, azaleas, that type of thing. And it already is acidic. Or you can acidify your soil by adding to it. Now, the easiest way to do that is to add a soil acidifier, meant specifically for this purpose. And this is by Espoma Organic. And again, the only time I'm going to use this is when I really do have to have acidic soil. And I didn't buy acidic soil. And I don't have any coffee grounds available to add to the soil. Now, coffee grounds will acidify your soil. However, a lot of people don't know, but you need to add 
the coffee grounds before they're used. If you use them and then add them, they're not acidifying your soil. They're certainly helping to, you know, add organic material to your soil. The earthworms will appreciate it. You will be building good soil, but they're not acidifying it unless they're not used yet. And I don't have any unused coffee grounds that I want to uh, give up. <laughs> so I do have this bag, which has been sitting around for probably nine or 10 months and I haven't used it because uh, I very rarely do, yeah. So I'm gonna add some of this to the soil. All right, just sprinkling some in there and some in my other hole. And now I'm gonna plant these plants. I'll put a little more soil acidifier, probably twice as much more on the top around the drip line of these plants. Now before I place these very uh, fragile elderberries, <laughs> elderberries in general are not fragile but you know considering how I've treated them these might be, I did sprinkle some really healthy organic soil on top of that acidifier because I don't want to harm the roots at all. So look here's the root system of the other one. You know, it's certainly not a substantial, doesn't have any soil around it either, but look what's coming out of it. The main stalk died off. There's a new shoot coming off. It does look healthy, but it's so precariously living there, isn't it? So we're gonna get that in the soil right away. All right, the bigger elderberry is planted now, and there's the little one, and you can see the soil acidifier. Uh, sprinkled around the drip line of both plants. Now I'm going to water them. So guys, this grew too. I think it originally was attached to this little guy here. So I think maybe I'm just going to plant it. I mean, it has some good roots. I can either plant it in a pot or plant it in the ground. I think I'm going to plant it in a pot but keep the pot right out here with these guys. Yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna do. That is looking good. It is in the very edge of the shade of the mulberry tree right now. Fortunately, the mulberry tree has started leaping out. And this container, which is at least five, I think it's a seven gallon actually, it's casting shade right there on the tiny little elderberry we planted there which is good because normally you should not be transplanting little things like this in the middle of the day. Even though it's only 66 degrees Fahrenheit, it's sunny and transplanting in the sun is not a good idea. However, in about a half an hour, this section of the yard will be in full shade. So I probably should have waited half an hour, but it'll be fine right now because like I said, this container is giving it shade. And then this one's getting shade both from the bucket it's in and from the tree behind and the larger one well it's not in shade but it will be in half an hour and I think it's strong enough that it can take it now the soil in here is about three quarters or more soil that I've made basically I've composted down from my you know yellow and browning leaves and my food scraps and my chicken manure and such in my compost pile. So basically it turns into soil or compost, whichever you want to call it. And then I added about two inches of an organic potting soil on the very top and I did add some soil acidifier to it since I don't happen to have any citrus soil on hand. So I think and hope they're gonna do really well. We shall see. And I'm really looking forward to getting those new elderberries in the mail soon, which I will, I promise, plant immediately. No more procrastination from me now that I know where I'm putting them. So I have decided to transplant the merit collards right back here in this long bed that's about six feet away from my western fence. A fence that is falling down. We have been planning all year to replace it this spring. It's just taken a lot longer because we've been waiting for the rain to stop. So next week, it's on the books. We're doing it. We have everything here, all the supplies, and my son is an experienced fencer. So we're really looking forward to finally having it done because the last few storms really did a number on what was left of the fence. <laughs> So this bed is about 15 feet long and I've added some compost to the back half where I'm gonna put the merit collards. I will have to add compost to the front half when I get ready to plant in it. 
Now, I think they're gonna do really well here because being that the sun sets behind this fence, this area doesn't get sunlight at all except in the morning. Uh, and even then it's a bit filtered because there is an olive tree to the left and a mulberry tree and bottle brush to the right. So given that they did really well all on their own on my covered patio where they got just some filtered sun in the morning, I think it might be the perfect spot for them. Now, look at this. And don't laugh, okay? Do you see those? Those are thimble berries. So I thought they had died. I planted these here three years ago and they never did anything. They, they obviously weren't getting enough sun, um, probably didn't have an acidic enough soil either. They've never grown, but all the rain they got this spring clearly made them decide to come back to life. So I dug them up and I'm gonna transplant them probably over by my elderberries. And hey, maybe we'll finally get some thimbleberries. All right, they're all planted. That didn't take long, super easy. And we will see how they do. I was never really a fan of Merit Collard's taste-wise. I love the purple tree kale, but Merit Collard, you know, it is it is good right in the middle of winter. That's when it's sweet, but not as good as purple tree kale. However, the ducks and chickens love them so much, I'm glad I'm gonna be growing them again. I'm also glad I planted them way over here on the opposite side of the backyard from the garden because these are one of the very few plants that I've ever grown that uh, struggled with some bugs, some kind of beetle was on them. And I don't want to chance that spreading to my other plants because I've never had a problem with any kind of bugs, except I think last year for the very first time I had some aphids and they were just on the long red noodle beans, which shall not happen again, I've determined. <laughs> but otherwise I've never struggled with any kind of bugs, so I don't want to chance that. We're gonna keep them over here and see. Maybe that was just a fluke thing and it won't happen again. Now, don't you worry about these thimble berries. I am not going to put them on the back patio in a corner and forget about them. <laughs> I'm going to plant them tonight or first thing in the morning. And I'll show them to you in my next garden tour just to prove it. So, have you forgotten any plants like I did and now you need to transplant them, bring them back to life? If so, let me know in the comments. We can all share in this experience together. Thanks for joining me today, and remember, you can create the life and the garden that you want, so why not start right now? See you next time, everyone.